everybody and welcome to Music with Meg's Violin School. This is lesson one and today we're going to learn how to hold the violin. Everybody follow me, it's music with Meg. Now before we begin, make sure you've got yourself into a good space. Somewhere where you can stand up ideally and you'll have enough room to move your arms around as we play the violin. Now it would be great if you could practice in front of a mirror so you can really see what you're doing. And now that you've got yourself set up, here we go. Now the first thing that we're going to need to do is set up our violin. So we've got the violin out of the case and we should have a shoulder rest. Now you might just have a sponge attached to some rubber bands for now, but that's fine, we'll fix it on the same way. So we're going to turn our violin round, and then you can see my shoulder rest has some little legs. Well, let's make sure those legs are facing the right way. And then they're going to clip onto the body of the violin. There you go. Now pop your violin on your shoulder, and if it doesn't feel quite right, you can adjust your shoulder rest by twisting the legs to make it higher or lower, and you can squeeze it together to tighten it as well. But for now, I would recommend not playing around with it too much. Now, let's learn how to hold our violin. Your violin goes on your left shoulder, so let's pop it up there. And your chin goes on the chin rest here. But your chin shouldn't be pressing down hard into the chin rest. It should rest nice and lightly. And let's use our right hand to support the body of the violin. You should be able to let go with your left hand and eventually let go with your right hand and the violin should stay balanced between your shoulder and your chin. Now you don't want to lift your violin too high or rest your elbow on your hip. So get used to keeping your elbow at this nice angle. Now your muscles are having to learn lots of new things to hold the violin up like this. So if you get tired, this is where we can use our rest position. Don't be tempted to rest your arm by letting the violin drop like this. If you need to take a break, you can take your violin off your shoulder and tuck it under your right arm like this. We call this rest position. You should be able to let go with your left hand and hold the violin comfortably with your right hand. Now let's hold our violin back up one more time. Here we go. Now for now let's keep our left hand on the body of the violin to help us support it. Eventually our left hand needs to find its way up here but that can be quite a strain so for now let's just take the weight of the violin and hold it on the body like this. Now don't be tempted to slouch or hold your violin too high because this is going to be really bad for your back. So let's make sure we've got this nice position. And now let's look at the right hand. Now our right hand will be using the bow, but for today we're not going to use our bow at all. What I just want you to get used to is having your right hand up here above the strings of the violin. Now if you look at me you can see that my elbow is lifted Again, my right elbow isn't too high or too low. It's not resting against my body. It's lifted so that eventually I'll be able to play nice smooth bow strokes. But for now, let's use our right hand to do some pizzicato. So pizzicato is the word for when we pluck the strings. So let's start with the lowest string, that's G. Keep your wrist lifted and let's use our index finger, that's our first finger, to pluck the string. Try again. One more time. Well done, now let's move up to the next string, that's D. You can always watch yourself so you make sure you get the right string. One more time. And now A, that's the third string. And now let's pluck the E string. 
Remember all the time while we're doing pizzicato to keep your elbow lifted and not rest your hand against the body of the violin. We want to keep our hand lifted. Great, now let's swap our hands over. So you can use your right hand to support the violin like this and your left hand is gonna find its way onto the fingerboard. Now our left hand starts up here. This is called first position and it's right up near the scroll of the violin. So your thumb is going to hook underneath and then your fingers can lay down on the strings one at a time and eventually we'll be able to use these to play different notes up and down the string. It's very important that you don't get pancake hands so don't be tempted to flatten your hands against the instrument or flatten your wrist because you won't be able to play very many notes if you do that. You need to imagine that there's a little mouse living in the palm of your hand. You don't want to squash the mouse so make sure you give him plenty of room. So your hands should feel nice and relaxed and the only part that is touching your violin at the moment should be your thumb, which is hooked around the bottom of the fingerboard. Now, leaving your thumb here, let's use your first finger, that's the index finger, to pluck the strings from up here. Let's start on G. Keep trying that. See if you can move your index finger independently from the other fingers. And make sure you leave plenty of space for your little mouse to live on your hand. Now let's try the same thing on D. Great. Now A. And now E. Now make sure that you're not collapsing the other fingers while you do this. You want to keep them up and ready to play on the strings. G, D, A, E. And now let's go the other way, starting from the top to the bottom. E, A, D, and G. Now that is what I'd like you to practice this week. Just five or ten minutes every day will do the trick. Make sure you get yourself somewhere where you can see with a mirror in front of you and somewhere where you're comfortable. And we're going to practice everything we learned today. You're going to practice setting up your violin with the shoulder rest. You're going to practice your rest position, holding the violin under your right arm. You're going to lift the violin onto your left shoulder and practice that really nice position we talked about. If you're feeling brave and ready to go for it, you can even try letting go of the violin and see if you can hold it in place using your chin and your shoulder. We're going to practice using the right hand to do pizzicato, remembering to keep our elbow lifted and our wrist above the strings. And then finally, we're going to practice with our left hand doing pizzicato with our index finger. Now make sure your thumb is the only thing touching the violin until your fingers are ready to play. And remember to imagine the little mouse living on the palm of your hand to make sure you don't squash it against the violin. Remember, you can hold the violin with your right hand to support the weight but if you're beginning to get more comfortable, you can let go with the right hand and just play with the left hand. If you begin to get really good at pizzicato with your index finger, try using one of your other fingers, like the second finger, or the third finger, or even the pinky finger, your fourth finger. Well done today, everybody. I know it's really tempting to move on as quickly as you can, but it's very important that we get these first bits right. So make sure you really practice this week to get your position correct and to work on moving those fingers independently. The longer you spend on this, the faster you'll progress later on. So really take your time, have fun, and I'll see you next time. Bye. 
Before you go, please consider making a contribution to Music with Meg. You can join me on Patreon or via PayPal. Thank you so much everybody and I'll see you next time. Bye!